So welcome to the 19th episode of The Window to Dubai. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm a little jealous I wasn't number one, but, <laughs> but, I heard, but I heard the setup wasn't here at once. Yeah, yeah. It's actually better, you know, because uh, at least there's people following us now. Episode one, no one saw it. So. <laughs> actually, I didn't even tell you, DJ Bliss, uh, I thank you for coming on. I actually reached out to you on Instagram thinking that you were just a local DJ, and then I got to know you, and I realized, wow, you're actually a pretty big deal. Thank you, man. I <laughs> appreciate it. It's amazing that you had time to come in. Um, I think I kind of want to cut into our conversation early and just get straight to it. Normally, I go in chronological order where you tell me your whole history, but I kind of wanted to go to the part where we were talking about how when people find something that they're good at, they love, and then all these other opportunities spawn off, because I felt like that, when I saw your YouTube video, kind of represented that. Mm -hmm. Could you talk more about just kind of finding DJ at a young age and then kind of the journey that it took you on? Um, yeah, I mean, I never really thought about, you know, where it would go or uh, what the steps was. I, I mean, I'm trying to just uh, recollect like my thoughts of uh, being in high school or university and I'm, I'm pretty sure there was never a thought in my mind saying I was gonna go down this route, which was to yeah. DJ or do TV or radio and any of that. Um, but I definitely knew that I had an interest in music. You know, I was in a band for for some of my teenage years, so I had a real interest in like uh, playing music. And then, really, I was DJing to get into the parties because I wasn't getting invited because I wasn't the cool kid in school. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Um, and now you are the party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was really it. That was the beginning of sort of the thought process of how it all started. And then, yeah, you know, next thing I knew, I was good at doing one thing. And I was like, all right, what's next? And it was like radio. Then I did that. And I was like, I was good at this. And then what I was going to do after that, it was TV. So it was really just, a, you know, very, very natural progression into getting to where I am. Yeah, and so it started young, right? You were about how old when you first started? I, I guess like my last two years of school, maybe I was like 15 or 16, um, I started doing like my school radio in, in my breaks instead of taking the break with the rest of the kids, I'd go yeah. play music for them. Um, and we couldn't really play like uh, much in, in that uh, break. They were like very controlled in what songs we could play. Yeah. I know we used to play a lot of Celine Dion stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know why. Yeah, I remember. I remember like they used to choose the songs, and a lot of times like it was Celine Dion. But <clears throat> um, yeah, um, yeah. So it must have been like fifteen, sixteen radio, and then and then I was trying to do like parties for you know the school parties, and I wasn't able to do all of them. But really, it was after I left school when I got my first uh, gig where I had like professional equipment that I was learning to use. Nice. And your choice of music is hip hop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And you, I mean, I'd say like urban in general, so um, predominantly hip hop, but definitely some R and B, some reggae, and uh, you know all the genres that fall underneath it. Yeah. What do you think makes a good DJ at the end of the day? Like, what when you when you see, when you go see another DJ, you like, all right, this guy's got it, or ah, he's just figuring this out. I, you know, I kind of can just tell from um, from from like the overall package. You know, when we talk about LeBron James, like what makes him so good? Like you can't say, oh, he's he's built well or oh, he can do throw uh, free throws or he attacks the basket well. It's definitely the whole package. You watch him play, he's good. And not only LeBron, we're, let's take like, you know, like Jason Tatum, for example, the rookie at Boston. Same thing, like you watch him play and you're like, fluid. yeah, even for someone who doesn't really understand basketball, you watch someone like that, it's like, oh, that's a good player right there. Yeah. Uh, and I think I feel the same way about other DJs. And it, it takes quite a bit to impress me, you know? Like, I don't like really, I don't even like going out unless I'm DJing. Yeah. But when I do go out and I see another DJ doing well, I'm like, oh, this guy's got what it takes. Yeah. And right now you're, you're, you have this 411 project, right? Where you kind of house, you kind of host the parties, kind of, you kind of own that whole space. Can you talk more about that project? Yeah, um, so like back in 2006, um, I started throwing my own parties, um, mainly because I wanted to meet these international DJs and artists. The, they weren't coming over here. Um, and I started doing it to, uh, you know, at different clubs and um, and then it was like a one party a month and then parties became so popular. They were called the, the real flavor parties back then. And then other clubs wanted the parties too. So then I started moving around. So yeah, I turned into like doing like these promotion for yeah. gigs. Um, and then a few years later, you know, people were like, oh, but we don't want the same name. So I created another night called 411. And then same thing happened with that one. We threw like this big party and then everyone wanted that 411 party. So what we did is we called 
and the mother company 411 Nights, so all the parties were underneath that. Yeah. Um, and now, so any parties we do is under the 411 Nights umbrella, um, and each night has its own name. Um, and we, we don't do so much international bookings anymore, like with other DJs. It's more like we've created uh, a brand that people know us for, for our marketing, our social media, the nice. DJs, the music, uh, the concepts uh, that we throw, or even the venues that we're in. Yeah, and, and what are the places that the 411's at now? So right now we're at uh, BOA on Friday, that's our like flagship night. We do Dome on Saturday, um, Cirque on Monday, and Toy Room on Wednesday. But we, we really move around, uh, you know, a lot, so sometimes the nights might change, so, you know, you yeah. can check us out on Instagram, uh, 411 Nights, if uh, you want to come to a party. But the parties are really a reflection of, you know, how I envision, um, how I, you, you know, the, the music style or the atmosphere of what I always did, whether I'm there or not, I am there for most of them. But, you know, when, when people ask me, like, you know, uh, where where to go and what to do, I always tell them, you know, just come to one of our nights. Like, we really, I guess we curate the music for each night as well. So it's not like you're going to come to each one of these nights and hear the exact same thing at these nights. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. No, that's awesome. I know. I know. Here, hip hop is really big, so I'm sure it does well. Yeah, they I, love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. You you were mentioned that you're a Gemini and yeah. you, you kind of scatter around. Yeah. What about all the other kind of business ventures you've got going? I know you've got more than just one thing going on. Yeah. So we got the four one nights, the and then we have select the talent agency. So we have a booking agency with uh, about ten DJs that we've signed, um, who do some of our four one nights party, but they also do parties outside too. Um, and then I have a barbershop, Beats and Cuts, um, which I started about four or five years ago. Um, right now, my focus is on really those three things, trying not to, you know, um, get my folks into a lot of other places. I really tried to do a lot of different things in the past couple of years, but um, sort of last year, I decided I want to just focus on me a little bit more and my own content. So uh, Yeah, which you're doing YouTube, you're, doing, yeah. you're really active on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, YouTube, Instagram. Um, I'm not on Snapchat anymore. <laughs> so it's it's just the, too many apps for me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I gave up when I got to Snapchat. I opened that thing and I fumbled my phone. Yeah, like, yeah. I, did I post something? I don't even know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but so, yeah, that's. Uh, I think Instagram and YouTube really where the focus is right now. Going back to your YouTube, mm -hmm. what kind of content? What's your focus of the YouTube channel? So I was uh, heavily influenced by a guy called Casey Neistat, which I'm sure everyone is influenced if they're into the vlog world. Um, I used to do vlog-like content like back in 2009 and 10, and I just stopped. So when the emergence of vlog happened, I was like, yo, I know how to do this. I've done radio and TV before as well. Yeah. I'm just going to jump right back into it. Um, but slow, slowly and surely, I realized that it's a different world on, on YouTube. You know, it's, it's a game of... Uh, thumbnails and uh, clickbait and uh, you know just things that kids were watching not it's not really about good content necessarily yeah. um, so really I was just going through a journey of learning what to do and then also because I was influenced by the likes of Casey or Gary V or um, like Gary v. yeah Gary V is good for sure yeah um, you know trying not to be like them was becoming a real struggle for me especially so I, I kind of stopped watching them for a while um, and I went through like a couple of different changes, but you know, I always talk on my vlog, I always talk about being persistent and consistent if you want to be successful in anything. And that's what I was really trying to do. Um, I'm on a little break right now. I haven't stopped. I'm just posting less content again to figure out what's the next move, uh, for me and what, you know, what direction I want to go through. But it's been fun. You know, I sure like I didn't get the numbers that I wanted, but I think if I didn't do that YouTube show, I wouldn't be sitting here with you, for example, for sure. Um, I wouldn't have put together that video of you know what I've done over my entire. I, I thought that was a great video, really. Probably one of the best videos I've seen where I've seen other people's content. And thought, wow, I actually want to make a video like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I need to make one of those now. How yeah. do I do it? Not look like I took it from him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, must, I must have got the idea from somewhere. I always have notes of what I wanted to do. And I always wanted to make like a documentary of what I did. Yeah. No, it's impressive, really. I, I thought it was really cool. Just for me, what I liked about watching it was it's like you could see you evolve from someone who just was into music. You became a DJ. Then you created parties around it. Then you created an agency that helps other people get work. You've yeah. created a haircut place or, or a barbershop that's 
connected to that. And there's just like you kind of built an ecosystem around just your love for music. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I saw was the journey. I was like, oh, wow, how do I tell my story that way, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, uh, I think storytelling is a gift. Uh, I, I don't think I have it completely. It's I don't know if it's something you can learn, but I'm definitely trying to learn. Um, and, you know, the people who do well with their content, uh, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or through pictures or stories or whatever, are good storytellers. Yeah. And those storytellers don't have to be in Hollywood anymore. Um, yeah. And they don't need like a multi-million dollar budgets to tell a good story. Yeah. Um, you know, the world's changing. Uh, and I think uh, people want to hear stories whether they're good they're fake they're twisted or you know everybody loves a good story yeah and i just think we're so much more connected now like yeah. right now a lot of people that follow me on instagram half of them are probably from dubai half of them are from the u.s and it's like that's why i created the show is just to kind of give them that window yeah. so i just wanted people to know like i really love dubai i think it's super cool and i just wish people would see it how i see it you know yeah. so that's why i created the show just to tell that story yeah i mean that's part of the reason why i was doing the vlogs as well a lot of it in dubai is uh, to show people uh, you know what Dubai had to offer, but like I said, you know, I, I was kind of like learning that people not necessarily want to see like, um, you know, the things that you show them about Dubai because I was seeing other people posting contents about uh, content about you know whether it was cars or money or um, um, I don't know the richness about Dubai, the perception of what Dubai is all about, and not to uh not to take away from what those guys are doing because you know some of the guys doing that are my friends, you know I totally understand it, but. I think, you know, people definitely have a certain perception about Dubai and, you know, the picture they want painted is to affirm yeah. what what that's all about. Yeah. But there's definitely more over here, you know? Yeah, for me, what I, yeah, I definitely had that image of it, but what I've learned about it is the diversity that I did not expect. The amount of people from around the world doing business here, never saw that coming. Yeah. And just the amount of opportunity. Yeah. I really think people underestimate. Like people talk, oh, the economy is down or this problem. They're like, go to Dubai Mall. Yeah. <laughs> There's you can't. Well, you're just bumping into people the whole time. There's tons of opportunity here. You know. Yeah. I was there on Friday. I mean, I couldn't find a parking spot. In yeah. There. I got blocked in the other day. I couldn't get out. I had to wait for the person next to me to move so I could get yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, and also, you know, regardless of what people say, um, you know, if things are great. All the time, there's, there's, it's very hard to find an opportunity to, to, to make it or you know, make it or break it. Um, so I think you should take advantage of any situation that arises. If things are good or bad, you should figure out how to adapt and you know, make it work for you. Yeah. You know, you got to really love this, this art form. And it's not only for DJing. I think it's just for anything that you want to do. You really have to um, you know, dedicate yourself to it. And again, I always use this. Uh, two words for everything persistence and consistency is the key uh, yeah. you know it, it doesn't happen overnight it takes a uh, it takes time sometimes um, or sometimes you might you know you might get it right away but if you really want to do it you really got to stick with it you know yeah. not gonna happen and overnight no definitely not and, and this is the same thing applies to, to anything whether it's social media YouTube or a job that you want to do you really just need to figure it out first uh, have a clear picture of what you want to do and then just go out and do it and let nothing come in the way of you uh, achieving what you want to achieve. Awesome. You want to shout out how people can find you, follow you? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram, DJ Bliss Dubai, uh, DJ Bliss on uh, YouTube. Those are the two places that I'm on most, but I'm on Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, and then if you want to check out the parties, it's uh, at 411 Nights on all social media. Awesome. I think it's a great episode. I Thank appreciate you, you being on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.